Another luxury, little bit of happiness. Just a smidge, just a small amount of happiness. Vilnius, you're about to get killed, but I want to know what's going on, Shingasi. Ooh, yeah, off you go. Off you go, we got our Armani tour now. I wanna see where everyone is. I need to know where we need to go. Eight population, four of them are there, three of them are here. That city's gonna be lost to loyalty. I'm letting that one flip. My MP have finally regrouped, healed, gathered themselves in a small position as possible so that I can actually attack with them. Let's go wipe out Chinese. China now. 28 damage against Impy on a city attack. China is possibly the worst person we could have started next to. Well, maybe not the worst person, but one of the worst people. Just purely because of the amount of damage they can kick out. But we'll continue pillaging. We'll continue. Oh yeah, we should be able to break these walls down quickly. Oh, we tanked that hit. I think we can tank another couple of hits. I, I really want speed, but at the same time, if you're offering me like 450 gold, I'm gonna take it. That's the best bit about raiding China. Just endless source of gold. Pillaging, kind of done now. Take city. Crouching tigers are by far the most annoying things. But you can kill them. They will bleed. They will die. Now we push on. Now we keep fighting. Oh, that city is actually on mine. Look, it's on four loyalty out of 100, but it's going to somehow still survive. So we're going to have to go and kill that one as well. That is unfortunate. Great general. Go and do some scouting for me. There are no walls on that city. Okay, that's good. That's, that's very good. Oh, that's weird. My barracks should give me two gold and one science, but I just built one in in this occupied Chinese city and it hasn't given me the bonus. Huh. Well, hopefully when I unoccupy the city that will come round, but that is a little frustrating. Never mind. Sometimes these things happen in mods. They can be very complicated. We just have to accept them. Feudalism. Time for feudal contract. Oh, they put walls up right at the last minute. That is annoying. Oh well, I'll give myself one turn of healing and then we'll go for it. Oh no, this barracks also hasn't given me the bonus as well. This was an original China city, but it's not occupied anymore. Huh. I'm going to try reloading and see if that does anything. Nope, I think it might be that, and I've seen this on other mods before, sometimes you have to build a city in order to get all of the upgrades. So because I've taken these from China, I, I kind of noticed it because their unique encampment was destroyed when I took the city, which normally it just converts into my unique encampment. We can't rely on the extra science and gold, or actually probably the extra housing from districts. Oh no, the housing seems to have come through. Yeah, I don't know. But anyway, it's, it's something to keep an eye on. Not to matter. We're doing fine. We're doing good. I was going to build a settler there for a second. No, more MP. Oh, mercenaries though. This is a huge power spike because mercenaries unlocks cores for me a little earlier and they get plus five base strength on top of the plus 10 that I normally get. There's China's city flipping. Did I mention I have a double attacking archer now? <laughs> oh yeah, that's powerful. And I mean, these archers have been such a huge benefit to me. Military emergency? No, we don't like that. We might find somebody joining in. Oh, a couple of people are joining in, including Congo, who was trading with me quite a lot there. 12 gold per turn. You sneaky person, you. Congo are on my borders on this side. Maybe I make a new army, send them over there. They've also taken Bologna from me. This time we've got trebuchets. We're about to unlock another great general. There's a lot of power spikes on their way to me. So combat wise, I'm in a good place. Let's just take China out of the game. Goodbye, China. By doing that, I maximize era score because I get the plus five from killing them. And I'm also going to get plus two or three from taking that city over as well. Now the question is, do we go down to the Mayans with seven cities or do we go across to Congo with ten? Both of them are strong but the Mayans have less attacking strength at the moment and Congo have more science. I think the Mayans might be a better option but they're a little bit further away well, at least through some mountains here so we might have to send decently sized army down in their direction. We can do that though. Now I think I'm gonna go for Congo. I know where they are. They're a little more powerful and with the science they've got it means they've got a lot of campuses and I wouldn't mind taking those for myself so that's kind kind of the aim right now. Building a large army, we're going to get cores by the time we hit them. We should have a decent power spike. We'll see how much that translates over. They might send their army across as well. Here you go. They are after China's city. Put limes in. Make sure all my cities have walls up. And now, three turn MP? I mean, that is fun. But a five turn MP core. Now that is something that I can get on board with. In fact, everyone making MP, I'm just going to switch over to a core because it'll actually flow the production forward. It's a nice little trick. So what I'm doing is I'm making friends with the Mayans and then we'll unlock alliances now. Get myself plus five combat strength against Congo because she's also at war. And you're going to levy that from Bologna, are you? Mm, I think not. Thank you very much. Okay, looks like they're splitting their army up a little bit. Not a bad result for me that because I can start doing a little bit of damage against all their units whilst my defensive army hustles backwards. My first core of archers as well. That's a lot of extra combat power. 64 damage on my archer warrior with garrison and a couple of promotions. 
weapons and it can fire twice. I haven't even upgraded that yet. Oh lord, that's quite powerful. Okay, Mapuche is a little more difficult. Unfortunately, Mapuche is getting a plus 10 combat strength bonus because I'm in a golden age. It's not a reason to not be in a golden age, it's just more of an annoyance. Watch this though. Bam. Crossbow. 55 range strength of all of the promotions, 70 attacking twice. Oh yeah. We have extra abilities, extra things. Oh, we've got mobilization because that's now an MP core. My power is spiking. It's spiking everyone. Knight can do pretty decent damage against my city. And the raider units are going to be even more powerful. Actually, are they? Eh, they're kind of, kind of iffy. You just don't have the defenses. You just, you just don't have enough. I'm too powerful for you. Three units. Oh, I mean, they're going to be teleporting into non-existence next turn because I'm about to claim that city. So I'm not even going to stick around. Bam. City taken. Campus delivered. Era score received. That's a nice pickup. That's a lovely city. Oh yeah. Of all the places to be stood, it's not a good one because my crossbow has now got its 80 strength double attack. Oh yeah, that's um, that's pretty brutal. So there's stirrups. I'm going to unlock education now. There's a couple of university spots that we could pop down, which would be good. And it would be good to have unlocked that before I hit Congo. Still selling all of my nitre across to the Mayans. Don't worry about that. I'm sure we won't regret sending them that much. Okay, my archers are pretty weak if they get hit. So I'm coring them all out. This raider just came in, killed one. But I mean, it sacrificed itself to do it. I'm not entirely sure that was the play. Mayans, military alliance, go on. Oh, I've got to pay for it. Fine, it's worth it. Plus five combat strength against Congo. Not Lataro at the moment, but we'll get that. We'll work on that. See, knights and cavalry are used to being the vastest units, but my MP with three movement, they're um, they're pretty quick. They will find you. They will hunt you down. Can't escape me. I'm on the way. Oh, Bologna is now on my side and they have revealed to me an 11 population city with no walls. That sounds like an amazing MP target. Double general points. Either that or we'll stop generals being popped out into the world and then Judaism is feed the world. I'll boost that. Amazing. Double profit points. The AI is like, hey, why don't we make more religions? It's not an option you often see. Every time, every time I meet an AI unit here, the resulting combat is just brutal. Coming through. Chungati is now on my side as well. Haha, -ha, reveal to me the back line. Again, none of these cities at the back have ever been threatened, so they've not got walls. They'll put walls up pretty quickly, but there's no walls at the moment, and that is something we can exploit. Plus, they can't help themselves. Because there's an emergency, they want to run units over to the other side of the map. It's built into them. They, they want to go in three China's cities, so they're pulling all of their units through my lands, and on the way, my entire reinforcements are here just going, hello? Oh, you didn't want to come through here, did you? Oh, well, that is a shame, isn't it? That is a shame, because unfortunately, this way is closed. Muskets. All right, muskets are a little more powerful. We should be fine if we can slip around, take this city quickly, and then use it as a bit of a staging ground. But we're going to have to do a bit of pillaging here. Envoy into Bologna just means that it's a little bit safer, and now I'm going to levy it. It's on the border. I get two era score. We've got the Golden Age. I'm not entirely sure a Golden Age is the best move for me when I'm fighting Mapuche. Maybe I should have gone normal, but hey, it all works. So a few developments in this war. Some are really good. Some are really bad. Really good is that I took about six damage from ranged attacks. So at the moment, Congo has nothing on me. The bad news is that they are starting to build Renaissance walls. They haven't quite finished it, but they're starting to build it, which means I do just need to get a tiny bit of damage done. If I can damage the city itself, then it stops being able to put the walls in. Oh, I love the flanking you get on these units. It's so good. Oh, it's an expensive attack, this. It's a really expensive attack, but I'm going to have to do just a little bit of damage. Now the wall damage is there. They've got to fix the wall before they can actually build it. Oh, look at all this. Hello. One, two, three. Lovely. I send one of my great generals back to go and pick them up. That's the reinforcement wave. This is what we can do when we get a little bit of production. The Zulu chain of death. I probably should diversify my units a little bit, but MP is so cheap. They're so cheap. I could even get a statue of Zeus for a long-term benefit. I'm actually going to do that. This is a really good wonder because it gives me 50% more production towards anti-cavalry units. Now, if this city proves to be impossible to take, I'm going to leave it alone, flank around and take this 11 pop city. What's Congo in at the moment? Golden Age. That's annoying, but it may not last. It may not last. And will they survive? Yes. Look at that. Six damage. That's only six damage. That's fine. It's a lot of muskets and I'm not going to do much damage against the muskets because they've got Defender of the Faith. Oh, that's annoying, Judaism. I won't need many units there just to hold that pass, which is mainly what I need to do here. Move you round and then, haha, crossbows in. Oh yeah, we're going to do crazy damage against the mus uh, muskets as long as we can get them out into the open. 
open. This is good. And we're now going to move a large chunk of my army in the other direction. Double support bonuses. Yeah, these things are going to be almost unkillable when we're done. And here comes the backup army. We're going to go right to that undefended city and we're going to swoop in as fast as we can. Yeah, they can barely do anything to me. They got a small musket hidden, but honestly, that's fine. That is absolutely fine. And, you know, we can actually do decent damage to the city as long as we just keep peppering it. Stop those Renaissance walls being built in the long run. That's all we need. Seeing as we're a different religion, I'm going to beeline reformed church and get wars of religion. That'll be really handy. Education's given me access. Now we can go to printing. We're getting libraries down as fast as we can. We need all of the combat strength bonuses we can pick up in this game. This is going to be a total war, but we have Zulu strength. We're very powerful. Like there's, there's no way they're going to push us back as long as we hold all of our combat strength advantages here. Pillaging. Two and a half turns of science each one. Excellent. And also very impressively large amounts of gold as well. City sieged. City sieged. Mapuche are running raiders in. Don't do that. It's really annoying. I do have defenses, but they're probably going to go all the way through to this city. Again, they can't resist it. It's like a calling to them. Now here's a unique improvement between two camps. Bam. Two extra culture. Love it. You can see just how effective doing a tiny bit of damage to that city has been. Stop them dead. And they can't get the renaissance walls up and it means my siege equipment is always going to be working. But one, two, attack. Is it worth attacking here? It's across a river, but I'm actually gaining a lot of, a lot of experience. Yeah. They're just grinding that city down now. Oh, they share borders. They share borders. The unique improvement share borders. That's wonderful. Oh, I love it. It really is like the Australian improvement. I'm so glad I picked Zulu. They're one of my favorite civs. They really are just so strong, so simple to use, so satisfying. Printing, plus three combat strength. We didn't build the university. I just pillaged my way through. Raffia mill. Ooh, this must be Congo's extra improvement. What do they have? Two gold, one production for every two mills. One gold if built on rainforest or woods. One gold from adjacent Mbanzas. Additional gold as you go through. Oh, wow. It's basically just a sort of banana plantation or whatever it is. It's cool. Has a lot of gold on it. Something I can very much pillage. And hello, your city is exposed. I'm going to attack it now. Byzantium. Oh, you are by slam teaming everyone, aren't you? You must have one of the religions that's doing so well. Cool. Well, that's good to know, isn't it? Let's see. Congo. Congo Dark Age? Congo Normal Age. That'll do. Am I on a different continent? That's the question. Or oh, we will be conquering onto a different continent. So I could give myself two loyalty per turn in all cities. But in a golden age, that's less important. I'm going to go monumentality. But honestly, none of those are particularly useful for me. We should just settle in for a little while. There's a lot of gold here. A lot of science here. A lot of culture here. They're not building walls. I see no need to move anywhere. And I've made myself a king off the spoils of the Congo. Extra charisma. I don't need any, you know. I'm Ursa Ryan. I'm full of charisma. Ha <laughs> ha. The battle do. Oh yeah. I reckon next turn, maybe next turn is the turn to take both cities. We'll see. Mapusha's just given up. The unit got to there and they were like, oh, what's the point? And they left them alone and didn't move them. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's so sad. Look at what I've built over here though. Look at all this extra culture that's just sort of swimming around in my land. It's a huge, huge boost for me. Oh, Byzantium. Look at that. So much trading to do. Do you want resources? Because I've got resources coming from everywhere. No, you don't. Do you want to get involved in my wars? Yeah, you do. Yay. Okay, so I might be able to make friends with you. No? Send you a delegation. We'll send you some open borders. They kind of like me. They very begrudgingly like me. Maybe next turn. Who knows? Okay, we've unlocked guilds. Guilds does something. Was it to my unique improvement? Yes, one production for every two adjacent ones. Ah, so we're getting more production from these things now. That's amazing. First of all, this Congo city will fall. Then, now that my appetite for pillage has been sated but a little bit, the second city immediately falls. That one had a university in it. Amazing. 0.3 and loyal. So the two cities we have are already loyal. I'll get to work repairing stuff, but it even comes with a builder so I can just chuck in some improvements. This is a turnout. This is a turnout for me. Oh, look, it's their true capital again. No walls. Wait, what's going on here? Do you want a word? Should we have a word? So you may have noticed I used to have a man at arms. Now it's a man at arms core. That's because if you use a unit to take over a city, you upgrade it, which is pretty fun. I also upgraded my MP down south as well for that exact same reason. People forget about that little aspect, but it's one of the more fun ones. This <laughs> resource, this levied troop, resourced, pillaged, whatever it is, it's doing amazing. Polonia has provided me epically large amounts of troops and yeah, I, I, Chingati could be another one just to send over to raid Mapuche, but I don't want to threaten their cities. This one is now beginning to get threatened by Chingati, so they're building walls. I want them to avoid building walls for as long as possible. We're tricking the AI into thinking they're safe. It's a very deliberate ploy. This improvement is a lot of fun.
fun. Just around all of the pastures here. Huge culture. Oh, musket, you can try healing yourself as much as you want, but when you're next to my crossbow and all of my archers, you're not going to last very long. Oh, the barbs are back. Yay. I'm so pleased to see you, barbs. All right. Uh, our army is, is elsewhere right now, uh, admittedly. Might have tripped up on that one a little bit, but crossbow core. We'll build that fairly quickly, especially as I boost my production. Oh, of all the things you could have broken, Warlord's Throne is a really annoying one. Can you not do that? They're attacking my encampment, which is fine. And I have really, really good city defenses. So again, that's quite good. I could use you not being here right now, I'll be honest. This crossbow is legitimately almost a siege weapon in itself. It's so powerful. A little bit more pillaging, a little bit more attacking, and another city. Thank you so much. And it's already loyal. That's a Renaissance wall. All right, there's a Renaissance wall to my south. I follow one religion. Congo follows another. So, feudal contract, oligarchic legacy. So we'll take serfdom out briefly. Let's put in wars of religion. Another plus four combat strength. That's a sort of bonus that just makes a lot of things very, very much easier. The new capital, hanging gardens. Again, Renaissance walls. You're building medieval in this city. No, no, just a single attack. Again, it's that little trick. Just dent it ever so slightly. But this one, Renaissance. They're all Renaissance walls. Well, I'll start using my crossbow to dent them. But yeah, we need some more troops here and we need them powered up. Military emergency passes. So I have a ton of diplo favor now. Anyone want to buy it from me? Byzantium does. Hey, you'll fund my war effort for a lovely amount of time. Excellent. Barbs have also been beaten back. Now, please, can I finish the Statue of Zeus in peace? Thank you. Both Congo and Mapuche are offering me big peace deals, but I don't want them. Right now, I'm laughing all the way to the Pillage Bank. Let me tell you, the Pillage Bank is a nice place to be. Look at this. Bam. More faith. I just immediately use it to pop myself down builders or traders or whatever. It's lovely. Everything's getting chopped down now. Fixed. We've got a lot of buildings popping up. We're going up to 100 science, 100 culture. Give me all of your science, please. I need request. I'm the only person in it. Hey, that's two diplay points for three because I've given you one gold. That's all you're getting. You should just be happy. It's a cavalry. Okay, so Congo have increased the strength now of their cities to a level that is a little bit more annoying. We've got line inventory on the way. I could be building bombards. Probably something that I should do. Have I got bombards? No, I'm still on trebuchets. Still there. Close enough. I'm sort of caught between two places when it comes to my war with the Congo. These Renaissance walls are proving tricky to kill. I need to get some siege equipment in, but it's expensive and my production base is quite far away from the front line. Normally I would peace out and come back once I'd unlock something useful like, for instance, observation balloons so I could start pelting from, from a distance. But the fact that the Congo are using cavalry when I have MP running around, that makes it very easy for me. They also do no damage to me via their ranged attacks. So I basically have uninterrupted access to every single one of their districts and my pillaging game is still incredibly strong. So in one way, I want to take peace. In another way, I don't need peace at all. So we're just going to keep being really annoying. I'm going to keep moving my units around. We're going to keep pillaging everything we can. At the moment, I think that remains the best course of action. If we can get a kill with this knight, now that, that is the forbidden law. I reckon it's going to be on this city and these MP will probably do quite a lot of damage to it. Might be able to get the knights to make the kill. It's going to be tough, but it's possible. Watching them throw units at me, that's even better. You're not going to kill my MP with cavalry. You can spam as many as you want, but it's not going to work. This will be handy. Statue of Zeus, archers, spearmen, battering ram and a 50% production towards anti-cav units. That stacks with the benefit I have to now producing units with an Encanda full stop. That means I believe, can't build MP anymore, but I can build pike and shot and they are very cheap. Unbelievably, Congo managed to run a settler right into my unit there. So look at that. We can go and settle somewhere. We've got a nice camp. Yeah, I don't mind. I'll settle around here. Why not? Have I done it? Have I left the city on enough health for the night to take it? I have. Military science boosted. Goodness me, I waited on that for far too long. I was just desperate to get it efficiently. <laughs> very desperate. One thing I do need to keep an eye on. I didn't even realize this, but Basel has actually converted four out of the five civs to their religion. I probably should think about getting my own at some point. There's still one available. Wow. Yeah, fair play. I guess Congo is not really the right person to be invading if I want to get my own religion, but never mind. You know, I have not settled many of my own cities this game, but here is one. Discovering the great city of Almar whilst I'm at it. Lovely. Himself a couple of luxuries, a couple of improvements. This city will be beautiful. Oh, that's two droughts right next to each other. Wow. Difficult to see them both, but yeah, there's one there and then there's one there. I think actually they've overlapped. That's mad. One is a withering drought. One is a major drought. I guess that's the problem 
problem when you cut everything down, but oh well. Line infantry, 80 power. Okay, this has got a bit more attack to it. This is the sort of unit that I'm producing now. Make that into an army using nationalism, and I think again, we'll just have a nice little step up in power just to keep this war with Congo going. You'll notice that honey is the resource we have the most of, so I'm just gonna go for duplicates of honey in the off chance that it goes through, but I have one vote, so it's unlikely to go through. Duplicates, sugar, okay. How much sugar is there in the world? This is, there's a decent amount, okay. I will ask for a duplicate. AI very rarely values bees well. Perfect, that's an extra bunch of immunities. I, I love that. Now if I use my line inventory, hopefully we can take the city. We can, amazing. It's taken, I feel like the tide is turning a little bit on Congo now. We're keeping loyalty. If I stop this war, the issue I can see is that loyalty will become a problem again. So maybe we just now continue expanding, keep fighting, keep bringing more troops into the front line. We've got reinforcements on the way. We're gonna pick up Vilnius in a second as well. This seven population city below actually still has medieval walls and I've just done a tiny bit of damage. So we're bringing our siege equipment over. This is a good opportunity. This is a good opportunity to take a city a lot easier. And we've got another city falling to loyalty there. Congo is gonna fall apart. There's not much they can do about it and I don't mind that. Let them disintegrate. Let it all fall apart. Ursa will rise. Listening post. Another three combat strength. That's handy. We now have plus three on them on intel rather than the other way around. I tell you what, my military ally is being flaky and that is also annoying. Vilnius, I could have it as a city state, but I think I'm going to keep it as my own because there's some lovely mountains and some improvements here. I could then go and sell to the open market for some well needed gold. My own great writer, nice. I think this must be stolen. Speaking of, that could be a really good way of making some money. No, AI is not rich this game. I have had games where the AI are just willing to give you money for everything. This has not been one of those. The other good thing about this game, apart from the religion, which is still scary, is that the AI isn't going crazy on science. My science has been pretty poor, but I'm only four techs behind Congo, the leader, and we've pegged them back massively. So tech wise, we are right in the middle of this. And I guess sometimes you have to play a deity a little bit like this. If I was comparing this to my other deity games, I'd be very very, very behind right now but if you simply compare yourself to who you're in front of and your opponents and adapt your strategy accordingly what I'm doing right now is perfectly right and as the loyalty recovers in these lands and I start fixing all of the campuses it just gets better as well oh they lost population in their own city that helps my loyalty again Darwin can give me a well-needed tech boost if I find a natural wonder which is more than a one tile so far I have not all right I'll use you as a scout I reckon the Mayans are sat on one normally the AI gets something big like that. Oh, oh, 91 strength line inventory attack. Bam. This is why suddenly, as soon as you can use a nice set of walls, this makes a huge difference. And pillaging. That pillaged gold will keep me afloat for another sort of 10, 15 turns, which is exactly what I need. And attack. City taken. Can I keep it loyal? Oh, minus 18. That's a big no. But it does give me another source of sugar, which is more amenities. And now I really, really, really want to go have a look and see what Byzantine dealing with. That's a 49 city that is not protected. Oh, hello. Oh, Byzantium. I'm just going to throw this world into chaos and declare war on you again. All right, Mayans, you're back in on this war. Don't think you can escape. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Clint Hennest, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Skeptical Bear, Cinnamon Beard, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, R be hedged, Mushkin Mandeltort, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Dr. Bobby, Polar Waller Bear, Mixamatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster, Indigenous 68, Technology Poet, Teddy Zursa, Zaf, Barnaby Rex, Sharky Bates, Charlie Bears, Flying Dutch Burbs, Nate the Great, Alex Frost, Mean Penguin, Interplanet Janet, Mr. Awesome, Frankincense Battlesword, Sleepy Lab, Bookaluke 79, The Nickerman, Bob Loblaw, Davalex. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye.